transform rule. He can only make two, right? Okay, so we made sp hybridized orbitals by mixing 1s with 1p. Let's see what happens with the other two options, okay? If we mix 1s with 2p and 1s with all three of the p orbitals, okay? Okay, so let me draw the collection of pure orbitals that we have to work with. Okay, so let's explore the second option. Let's mix 1s with two of these p this time. So 1s with 2p. Okay, so we're mixing three pure orbitals together. So we better end up with three hybridized orbitals in the end, right? And what are these orbitals going to be called if they're made by mixing 1s with 2p orbitals? sp2, right? Because it's made out of 1s and 2p, so sp2. Okay, so let's draw these out. And they're gonna look like this. Okay, so they're still gonna have some roundness here on the end, right? But they're gonna be longer and thinner and look more like p orbitals. And that's because this time we mixed in two times more p orbitals than s orbitals, okay? And hey, let's say it again. The number of pure orbitals combined, which is three, is going to be the number of hybridized orbitals you make. So hey, we're gonna make three of these guys. Three of these guys, we made two of these guys. Okay, so hey, if we made these from mixing 1s and 2p, then this is gonna be called S1p2, okay, or sp2. And hey, if we looked at these, how they would actually look like on an atom, then hey, here's like say a carbon, right? So, all right, here's gonna be one, here's gonna be two, and here's gonna be the third one, okay? These little things on the end are the other small side of this, like this is the other small side of this lobe. This is the other small side of this lobe, okay? Okay, and hey, if, we, you, if you wanna place these orbitals as far away from each other as possible, then they're going to look like this and be 120 degrees apart. So 120, 120, 120 degrees apart. And what shape does this look like to you? Tetrahedral, trigonal planar, or linear? Trigonal planar, okay? So, hey, just to reinforce what I said about hybridized orbitals being the only way to make sigma bonds, single bonds, how many hybridized orbitals did we make here? We made three, one, two, three hybridized orbitals, right? So, hey, how many sigma single bonds can this guy make or a hybridized sp2 atom make? Three, right? One bond for every hybridized orbital. So one here, one here, and one here, right, you guys? Okay, so if an atom has sp2 hybridization, then it's gonna have three sigma bonds, it's gonna be trigonal planar and 120 degree bond angles, okay? And we're gonna write that all down later in a, in a uh, little column, okay? Okay, so let's do the last option and draw one S mixing with all three orbitals this time. So let me draw up our collection of orbitals one last time, our pure orbitals. Okay, so if we're gonna be mixing 1s with these three p orbitals, then that's gonna give us a total of four pure orbitals that we're combining to make, right? So, hey, if we're combining four pure orbitals together, we better end up with how many hybridized orbitals? Four, right, you guys? And if it has four hybridized orbitals, then how many sigma bonds can it make? Four, right? And if it has four bonds, then what shape is that compound gonna be? tetrahedral with bond angles of 109 degrees, right? That's what VSEPR theory predicted, right? Okay, so let's draw these orbitals out. And this is a lot longer and skinnier than the previous two that we've seen because we're mixing another p orbital into the mix, right? Okay, so if we mixed four total pure orbitals, then how many hybridized orbitals are we gonna have? Four, right? And if we mixed 1s with 3p orbitals to make this, then what's this orbital gonna be called? S1, 
P3, okay, or just SP3. Okay, so this thing that has four hybridized orbitals can make four sigma bonds and is therefore going to be tetrahedral with bond angles of 109 degrees. Okay, so if you wanted to see how this would actually look like on an atom, then hey, remember how we would draw this atom out like this? Or a tetrahedral shape like this? With a wedge coming out like this and a dash going out like this? Then hey, here would be, I'll draw this in blue. Here's one of these orbitals. Here's another one. Here's another one going to the back. Here's another one going to the front, okay? So it's kind of hard to see in this picture, but you just have to imagine it in 3D, okay? Okay, so cool, you guys. Just for the sake of comparison, let's do a side-by-side -side comparison of each hybridized orbital that we made, okay? So, hey, here's a pure S orbital. It's a perfect round sphere, right? If we mix it with one P orbital, it introduces a lobe shape, but it's still pretty round, right? If we go on to mix in two P orbitals, the resulting hybridized orbital is longer and less round. And if we mix in three P orbitals, then it's even longer and even less round, okay? But hey, if we compare it to what a pure P orbital looks like, like this, you can still see the traces of the S orbital that was mixed in, okay? Another thing to notice in this side-by-side -side comparison is that as you go from sp to sp2 to sp3, the orbitals get longer and skinnier, okay? What that means is, is that if an atom uses an sp hybridized orbital to make a bond, it will be shorter than an sp2, which will be shorter than an sp3. So the longest bonds are made by sp3 hybridized orbitals, second longest sp2, and the shortest ones are made by sp hybridized orbitals, okay? Okay, so if you're still having trouble imagining how these pure orbitals morph into these hybridized orbitals, then think about this. You've all seen those picture booths in the mall, right, where a guy and a girl sit inside, take their picture, and it prints out what their kid would look like if they had one, right? Yeah? Okay, well, all that machine is doing is just taking facial features from the guy and facial features from the girl and mixing them together to see what their kid would look like. It's the same thing with these pure orbitals. Pure S and P orbitals mix features and form hybridized orbitals, okay? All right, so the last thing I want to point out here, you guys, is what happens to the P orbitals that aren't hybridized. For example, when we mixed one S orbital with one P orbital, there were still two P orbitals that we didn't mix. And what happened to those? Did they just disappear? No, you guys, they're still there, right? They remain pure P orbitals, okay? And so I should have also drawn out one more P orbital here. For this, this guy, there's still a pure p orbital. Oh, I should have drawn him a little bit smaller. So this guy has one hybridized pure p orbital. But when you get here, you guys, we combined all of the pure p orbitals to make four hybridized orbitals, okay? So, hey, these didn't just disappear. The pure orbitals don't just disappear. They're still there. They remain pure p orbitals, okay? And you'll see later that double and triple bonds are formed when using these pure p orbitals. But we'll cover exactly how multiple pi bonds form when we get to the alkenes and alkynes chapter, okay? For, for now, I just want you to know that single bonds are formed by overlapping hybridized orbitals, and that unmixed pure p orbitals are used to form multiple bonds, multiple pi bonds, right? And this is why we say that a double bond isn't just two single bonds put together, because single bonds and multiple bonds are made differently, okay? Single bonds are made from hybridized orbitals, multiple bonds are made from these pure unhybridized orbitals, okay? Okay, so now that you're familiar with how orbitals are hybridized, let's tie this in with the shapes and bond angles of compounds predicted by VSEPR theory. And let's organize these relationships into a chart, okay? Okay, so let's fill this chart out together, you guys. I've labeled this chart, how to determine shape bond angle and hybridization. So we have shape, bond angle, and hybridization, okay? And you can tell this by looking at how many sigma bonds and how many lone pairs are connected, okay? So, hey, check this out. If you have four sigma bonds or lone pairs, then this is gonna give you a hybridization of sp3. Your shape is going to be, therefore, tetrahedral, 
And if you're tetrahedral shaped, that means you're gonna have bond angles of 109 degrees. And this makes sense, you guys, because if you're sp3 hybridized, that means that you mixed 1s plus 1, 2, 3 of these pure p orbitals together to make 4 sp3, which look like this. Right, you guys, you made 4 sp3 hybridized orbitals from mixing these together, which is what's going to allow you to make 4 sigma bonds, 4 single bonds. So the only way you can make four sigma bonds, four single bonds, is by having sp3 hybridization, by having four of these hybridized sp3 orbitals, right? Because, hey, single bonds can only be made by overlapping hybridized orbitals, okay? So this gives you four hybridized orbitals to overlap, giving you four single bonds that you can make, okay? So if you have a combination of three sigma bonds or lone pairs, this is going to give you a sp2 hybridization and a trigonal planar shape and that's going to give you bond angles of 120 degrees and last but not least if you have a combination of two sigma bonds or lone pairs this is going to give you sp hybridization a linear shape and bond angles of 180 degrees. And if you ever want to double check yourself, then check this out, you guys. This number here better add up to this number here. What I'm saying is, hey, we could call this S1P3, right? We didn't write that down initially because, hey, the one is implied. But, hey, I'm telling you that these numbers here better add up to this number here. So, hey, S1P3, 1 plus 3 is 4, okay? How you make 4 sigma bonds is by, do, is by forming 4 sp3 hybridized orbitals, okay? The same thing is true here. This is S1P2. So, hey, 1 plus 2 equals 3. The way you form 3 single bonds is by having 3 sp2 hybridized orbitals, right? Same thing as here, S1, P1, 1 plus 1 is 2, okay? But let me erase that, you guys, 